Yunma, welcome to all of you. Whether you are joining us on Zoom or watching this on YouTube or whether you're gathered here in person. Can I just say on a personal note, this, this thank you is in the bulletin, but thank you especially to all of you who sent messages or cards or dropped in something at the, the manse um, on the occasion of, of Dad's death and the funeral on Tuesday. And it has been really lovely to know that we have a community around us supporting us at this time. Special thank you to those of you who've told me you watched the funeral service because it was long, I apologize. We, we all inherited from someone the gift of the gab. And it seems to have rubbed off on Dad's friends as well. But thank you. Um, can I invite you to join with me in our call to worship as we reflect this morning on this passage in Luke 19, the story of Zacchaeus wanting to see Jesus and coming to know Jesus. With the pressing crowds searching for healing and hope, we wish to see Jesus. With the pushed out and cast aside, with the lonely lost, stripped of pride, we wish to see Jesus. With those who seek mystery and meaning, wisdom and grace, we wish to see Jesus. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you come searching for us that you find us in all the places where we sometimes thought we were sort of hidden and yet couldn't entirely hide our desire to be found by you. We thank you that you find us, that you embrace us, and that you call us into a new relationship with you and a new way of living. We want to reflect on that this morning. And we want to celebrate your love. Amen. I'm lighting our Christ candle as a sign of God's presence with us. And we're singing together, praise God for this holy ground.
Thank you very much to Alison, who's playing for us today. And I also, ah, oh, he's not here today. He's away celebrating Annika's birthday. But I also wanted to say thank you to Steve Blackburn because it's a lot brighter, this image behind me. It, it was a lot brighter two weeks ago when I was here too, but I didn't notice so much then. <laughs> but yes, it was a lot of work, I'm told, and it's made it much more vivid and much more beautiful. So big thanks to Steve. It is the time for the children and maybe the grown-ups too. And I've been thinking a little bit about things we might bless. Elizabeth, you can bring your dad down the front if you like, because he's obviously desperate to come down the front. Or you don't have to. I was thinking a bit about things we might want to bless, particularly the places we gather. And I first thought of this place, and there's a picture there. It's a little bit dark. It's a lot brighter there. You, can, you probably recognise this place. You might look around and realise you're in this place. And I also thought of these places, our next image. I don't know if the place you live in looks a bit like that. It might, but you get, you know what I'm getting at, the houses we all live in. And perhaps blessing the houses we live in. So I prepared a couple of sheets, which are down the back for any kids or anyone young at heart, a colouring in sheet and a house blessing sheet with some words there, but I thought you could draw a picture of your house and maybe put that on your fridge or somewhere else and you could regularly bless your house. But can I invite you to join me in this house blessing now? I apologise if it's a bit hard to see. Can you respond with the words that are in white? May God give blessing to this house and all who come here. May Jesus give blessing to this house and all who come here. May the Spirit give blessing. May all who come here give blessing. Both roof and frame. Both window and glass. Both gate and door. Both man and woman. Both young and old. Both guest and host. Both stranger and friend. Peace on each window that lets in light. Peace on each corner of the room. Peace on each place that ushers sleep. Peace on each place that cradles sleep. Peace of the Father, peace of the Son. Amen. Let's hear the word of God for us this morning. The first reading is from Psalm 119, verses 137 to 144. You are righteous, O Lord, and your judgments are right. You have appointed your decrees in righteousness and in all faithfulness. My, my zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried and your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have come upon me but your commandments are my delight. Your decrees are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live.
The New Testament reading this morning is from Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come in this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. We're singing a song that we did two weeks ago, so it's a newer one, but it's fairly easy. So can I invite you to stand and just to join in as you feel comfortable.
dad's funeral was a little long, but not as long as some. A good conversation starter a few weeks ago was, how much of the Queen's funeral did you stay up to watch? I know some of you, very staunch Republicans or people with other things to do, didn't watch any of it. Some of you watched all the way to the internment at Windsor Castle and others fell somewhere in between. I turned it on promising Grace and Zach that we would just watch up until the first hymn, then maybe till the end of the service, then maybe just a little bit more. And at this point, Grace left us and Zach and I watched the whole procession. It uh, brought back memories of being in London with the kids in 2017 and even more of being there with my parents in 1985 for the Trooping of the Colour. On that occasion, we arrived very early looking for a good spot. We were very impressed with the Queen's guards with those incredible hats. This was another favourite funeral question. Which is your favourite hat? <laughs> and we waited and we waited and we waited until finally the Queen rode by. She was riding still at that stage. It was much more low key when we went to see the Queen arriving at Government House in October 2011. We simply parked in Yarralumla, outside the Cowan's house, uh, walked through the reserve, and 30 minutes later, the cars appeared and just as quickly disappeared. I have shown you this picture before, thanks to the tinted windows. That's all we saw of the Queen and Prince Philip. But that's how a parade works, isn't it? They just smile and wave. You just smile and wave. And they go on their way. And then you go on yours. Jesus continues on his way to Jerusalem. And Zacchaeus, having for a few moments been part of the excitement, the intrigue about who Jesus might be, goes back to his duties as chief tax collector in Jericho. Except that's not what happens. Jesus stops. He looks up at Zacchaeus. He calls Zacchaeus by name. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Jesus brings the whole parade to a screeching halt. I'm not sure how I would have felt if the Queen had ordered the car to stop there on Dunrussell Drive, wound down the window and called out, Belinda, hurry home because I must come to your house today. <laughs> this would have been a shock. Because there are rules, there are protocols, there are reasons why people meet the Queen. And the crowd here are shocked because Zacchaeus is not the sort of person that they think Jesus should be meeting with. Definitely not staying with. He is a tax collector and tax collectors were despised for their collusion with the Roman oppression and they were known for exploiting the poor. In rabbinical literature, tax collectors are akin to robbers. 
So the crowd begin to grumble. And it's the same word, the same kind of grumbling that the Israelites did against Moses in the wilderness. Jesus is paying a high social cost for associating with Zacchaeus, for being the guest of one who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus too, I think, would be shocked. All he had wanted was to see who Jesus was, just, just to see him, to get a bit more of an idea. Not to have Jesus see who he was. I've told you this story before too about my friend Tim who was in the CBD in Sydney many years ago during a papal visit. He'd been shopping in Grace Brothers or you know now Maya before the building there in Sydney was completely renovated and when it had a few very odd entrances and exits and he popped out of one of these lesser used exits onto a completely deserted Market Street. And as this realisation was dawning on him that there was no crush of shoppers, no cars, he looked down and saw a police cordon at the end of Market Street. And at that moment, the Pope Mobile turned the corner and came up the street. And as Tim was the only person standing there, the Pope smiled and waved at Tim. I don't know that Tim even got the chance to smile and wave back. But Jesus does more than smile and wave. As I mentioned, he looks up and he sees Zacchaeus and tells him to hurry and come down because he is coming to his house today. Hurry. The language here indicates that this is not a chance encounter. The same Greek word is used in Luke 2 to describe the shepherd's haste having heard the angels, to find the baby Jesus in the manger. And for I must stay, the language of necessity indicates that this encounter, Jesus meeting Zacchaeus and inviting himself to Zacchaeus' house, is not a deviation from the parade schedule but an integral part of Jesus' kingdom mission. An elemental expression of God's desire to know and to be known by everyone, even those designated as tax collectors and sinners, of God's love for every one of us. So this gospel story reminds me then not of seeing the queen or being waved at by the pope, but of far more significant encounters of being in bed at the age of eight and realizing that God's call on my life was not filtered down through my parents, but was coming to me directly from God. Of realizing age 14, that the God who had been so faithful to me, so sustaining for me, needed to be publicly acknowledged in some way and being baptized at French's Forest Baptist Church. Or 
in my early 20s, having a powerful experience of knowing that God was the ground of my being. And all the years of finding my footing on that ground, continuing to find my footing on that ground ever since. So does this story remind you of such an encounter in your life? Was it an altar call when you were challenged to commit your life to Jesus? Or a significant conversation with a significant person? Or a verse that suddenly leapt from the pages of scripture? God speaking directly and unambiguously to you? Or was it a series of events? Or just a realisation that rose up quietly and steadily and compellingly within you until its truth for you could not be denied? Perhaps Perhaps that moment is now, today. Perhaps that moment is coming because it is coming. Hurry, says Jesus, for I must stay with you today. This is what it means to be a Christian. We celebrate that God loves and calls each one of us, every one of us, tax collectors and sinners, long-winded pastors and sinners, teachers and public servants and retirees and students and children and sinners. We are all sinners, but we are all loved, and we are all called. And this is what we, as I mentioned two weeks ago in Sunday to Sunday, celebrate as Baptists, that because God calls every one of us, we can respond to that call and witness to that call and that response by being baptised. Baptists believe that baptism is so full of meaning, this identifying with Christ's death and resurrection, being cleansed from sin, being born into the family of God, acknowledging God's call on our lives, that it should be a conscious experience in every Christian's life. But the call doesn't end there. Jesus doesn't smile and wave or exchange a few pleasantries and then move on. God's call changes our whole lives, the whole rest of our lives. We read this in Zacchaeus' response to Jesus in verse 8. Half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Zacchaeus' salvation includes attitudinal changes, behavioural changes in relation to wealth that impact the rest of his life. The use of the Greek present tense here tells us that Zacchaeus' commitment is ongoing. This is not something he will do only once. Perhaps it's even something that he's been already trying to do just as he was trying to see Jesus. And the same is true of us and celebrated in our Baptist tradition that we are a priesthood of believers, believers who must keep doing 
not just once, but all our lives, holy work. Keep seeking to be a holy people because salvation has come to our house. Are you mindful of this? Are you mindful that salvation has come to your house, to your workplace, your leisure time, your relationship, your budget, through your encounter with Jesus? Did you just smile and wave at Jesus? Or has Jesus invited himself home and is transforming you and the world around you? I've mentioned before the words inside the cover of my grandfather's Bible, my father's father. Two dates and two simple lines. Under one date, it reads, the day I became a Christian. And under the second, it reads, the day I started doing something about it. <laughs> Perhaps Pop could have added, and again, and again, and again, and again. We are called to follow and to keep following to be changed and to keep being changed. Not just to smile and wave, but to welcome, to welcome the God who welcomes us, the God who not only meets us where we are, but follows us home and makes a home with us forever. Can I invite you to sing as our response to that call, this next hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
I am using that metaphor of a house for our prayers of intercession this morning. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that you invited yourself into Zacchaeus' house and into Zacchaeus' life and that you do the same with us. In the doorways of our lives, we ask that you always keep them slightly ajar, always that little bit open to what you are doing. And so friends and strangers may experience your love in our welcome to them. May you watch over our comings and our goings and be our constant companion on every journey. In the living rooms, the lounge rooms of our lives, gracious God, we give you thanks for places to unwind, to enjoy the company of others. May we find joy in our relaxation. May we always be generous hosts. In the kitchens of our lives, we pray that you supply our every need according to your great riches. We ask that you feed all the hungry with good things, that you help us desire good things, and that you help us to share the labours that are involved in bringing good things. Gathered round our tables, we give thanks that you welcome us to your table, sharing your life with us, inviting us to share our whole lives with you and to see this wholeness and life come for others. We pray for those around the world at this time who do not know this wholeness, we lift up to you especially the terrible conflict in the Ukraine and we ask for peace. We lift up to you those other parts of our world that are impacted by this conflict and others. We pray especially for those in the Horn of Africa, Afghanistan, Yemen and Syria who are facing famine. We pray for all who are grieving around our world at this time. May our world know your peace. May it be made whole. In our bathrooms, Creator God, we give you thanks that you made us, our bodies, minds and spirits, you called us good. Give us a proper care, a proper love for our bodies. Be with those who are sick in mind or body or spirit. We pray for those who are anxious in our church and amongst our friends and family. We pray for those who are grieving at this time. We ask that you hold in your hands those who are having or recovering from treatment. We think of Annika, of Alan Howe, of Richard and Val and Warwick and Sirapan. We pray for those whose bodies are getting frail, for those who are in care. We pray for Eunice, for Val and Grant, Dorothy, Keith, Jean, Merle, Max, Don and Dawn. And be with others, family and friends who are on our hearts and minds. In our bedrooms, sheltering God, be the true rest for your people. Cover each person with the shelter of your wings 
Bless us in our hours of rest and refreshment, that waking, that sleeping, we can rest in peace, and waking, we can rise to serve you. We dedicate our houses, we dedicate this house, we dedicate our lives to you. May they be filled with joy and laughter and freedom. May they and all of us offer rest for the weary, healing and comfort for those broken and hurt, encouragement for all who desire peace and justice, for all who seek you, who long to see you and your kingdom come. Amen. Just before John comes up, I want to show you a video from Baptist Mission Australia about a special day of focusing on the work of Baptist Mission Australia that we're going to hold on the 13th of November. And part of this special focus will be to go for a walk together and to pray for this community and for what is happening here, for God's presence here and for communities around the world. But we haven't planned the route of this walk. So if you would like to be part of the planning, we thought maybe we could have a sort of less ambitious walk and a more ambitious walk. Um, Please contact Steve or myself or the office, but for a better explanation, here's the video from Baptist Mission Australia. We are walking the world in Doncaster. I'm walking the world in Mozambique. We're running the world in Thorn Lee. I am travelling the world in Whiz Beach. We're cycling the world in Thailand. We're walking the world in St. Ives. I'm walking the world in Mozambique. I'm walking the world in Thailand. We're walking the world in Phillip Island. Walk the World is an interactive new prayer event being introduced by Baptist Mission Australia in November. So what's it all about? It's about praying for your local community and communities around the world as you get out and about in your neighbourhood. On November 11 to 13, 2022, as you walk, run, ride, wheel around your local area. Join us and pray for Baptist Mission Australia intercultural team members around the world. As you walk your world, pray for the world. Join us in Walk the World. Watch out for great resources coming soon for all ages. Across the street and across the world, let's pray for all communities to be transformed by the good news of Jesus. So, how can you get involved? Number one, head to our website to register. You can register as an individual, a family, a small group, or a church. It's totally free to get involved. But if you want to make a donation to invest in Kingdom Work, then you can do that when you register. Number two, on the weekend of November 11 to 13, get out into your local neighborhood in whatever way works for you and pray. Pray that God would be at work in your local community and the communities around the world. Use our resources to equip and inform your prayer time. Number three, let us know how you went. As a global community, how many kilometers will we travel? For everything you need to get involved, head to www.baptistmissionaustralia.org forward slash walk the world. Now, how will you walk the world?
Good morning. Uh, after our service finish, finishes up this morning, just a few minutes, we're going to be holding an information session uh, for people who are interested in knowing a little bit more about the motions that are being discussed at the uh, New South Wales and ACT Baptist Assembly on the 12th of November. Uh, and there'll be an opportunity for discussion as, as well as getting some information. And there will be a, another session on the same topic held by Zoom at 7.30 on Wednesday evening. Uh, next Sunday after church, uh, we'll be holding a, a session on the next steps for the development of the current Curry Crescent Community Centre. Uh, we're particularly interested in hearing more about um, people's interests and how they'd like to be involved in that, people from within the church community. And I'd certainly encourage as many people as possible to come along to that. And uh, I suppose sort of related to that, I noticed that this weekend there is a, there is a, the community gardens are having uh, an open gardens uh, weekend. So if you want to wander down to the gardens uh, after you've come to the information session, uh, <laughs> Uh, you, you, there'd be someone there who'd be able to show you around and talk to you about what's going on at the um, community gardens. Uh, now, there are a number of ways in which uh, you can make a financial contribution to the life and work of our church, and they're shown on the screen now. Let's pray. Loving God, like Zacchaeus, we know that your love can work through us, that it transforms us and enables us to live in your way. So we offer you our gifts for the transforming of others' lives, for the transforming of our world, for the good of everyone. Amen. Our final hymn is, Will You Come and Follow Me? Let's stand and sing this together.
I have a big stack of those house blessings, so if any grown-ups want to take those home, you can. I'll take them out the back with me. On your hearts and on your homes, the blessing of God. In your coming and your going, the peace of God. In your life and your believing, the love of God. At our end, a new beginning, the arms of God to welcome us and bring us home. Amen. <laughs>